What's going on friends, Sam Predis here, back once again filming from the new unboxing studio. But we've got something to show you, it's, well, the new bamboo. It's the new bamboo. So this is the H2S, a sort of inbred brother of the H2D that's bred with an A1. Well, certainly on the extruder display with the body of the H2D. And being the grandson of the X1 Carbon, well, is this the printer that we've actually asked for? You know, the bigger X1 Carbon. Well, let's get straight into this one. You are watching a master of work. That's right, friends, the new bamboo has arrived, going by the name of H2S, a name that sounds less like a cutting edge 3D printer and more like something you'd accidentally inhale near an overflowing drain. And it does make me wonder who dreams up these names, H2D and H2S? And I wonder if they've ever felt joy. At first, I had written off this counterpart as a rather underwhelming and unimaginative successor to the X1 Carbon. But frustratingly, the H2S has made me rethink that snap judgment. In fact, it's made me view both machines in a slightly different light, which is more self-reflection than I'd usually expect from a 3D printer release. Naturally, like every bleeding edge tech showcase I churn out, we begin with the ritualistic unboxing, because apparently none of us have seen a cardboard box before, yet we insist on being shown another one anyway. Predictably, it was a no frills affair. Corrugated packaging, protected foamy nonsense, and that trademark we care honest level of attention we've come to expect in 2025's dystopian gadget scape. This time, however, and hold on to your hats, I've been sent the green version, which allegedly grants me permission to fire lasers indoors, because nothing screams modern creative professional like risking retina detachment in your spare room. That said, and despite this new thrilling danger feature, I remain spiritually uneasy about the idea of intermingling clean studio gear with anything remotely dirty. So I'm swerving that particular rabbit hole for now, but we will come back to that in a future video. And before you mutter, all right, it's a bit dramatic, isn't it? Allow me to clarify, and we have just spent the last eight months rebuilding a chunk of my house thanks to a delightful little electrical fire incident. And while I do genuinely trust the built-in safety wizardry of most of the machines that land on my doorstep, I'm not exactly chomping at the bit to reintroduce smoke into my newly reconstructed existence just yet. Call me old fashioned. Instead, today's Descent into Madness will focus entirely on the H2S's 3D printing prowess, which, spoiler alert, handles it annoyingly well. Out of the box, it's an absolute show-off, polished, refined, and irritatingly competent. And yes, I'll admit I was genuinely excited to peel back the fresh protective film on a shiny new piece of gear, especially with the radical luxury of actual time to produce something worth uploading to the YouTube void, rather than the usual race against the algorithmic apocalypse. And I even had time during the auto setup process to mow the lawn. So it takes about 30 minutes to calibrate the Bamboo Lab printer. So it's just enough time to have a cup of tea and to mow the lawn. I don't know what's going on with this video. I've, uh, create a burnout, nervous breakdown. I can only apologize. Whether you're a hobbyist, a student, or a pro engineer, PCBWay.com has you covered. From simple two-layer boards to complex multi-layer designs, they offer high-quality PCBs with fast turnaround and competitive pricing. Plus, their assembly service and 3D printing options make them the one-stop shop for makers, so visit PCBWay.com and turn your ideas into reality. Thank you once again to PCBWay for sponsoring this channel. Let's move on. Both the HTD and the H2S are dressed in matching clothes, sort of like creepy twins. However, there are some slight differences. For example, the bed size is a large 340 x 320 x 340. You'll remember that on the H2D, the bed size is reduced due to the dual nozzle setup. The nozzles in this case are made from hardened steel and reach temperatures of up to 350 degrees. Being enclosed, it opens up to a whole world of filament goodness, including glass and carbon fiber, along with reinforced polymers. That on top of the usual PA, PC, PET, ABS, AVA, PLA, TPU, PVC, and PETG, to name but a few. The bed heats up to a toasty 120 and I'll be the first to admit that I love the temperature control flap on the top of the front of the printer, but be careful not to leave anything on top of it to block it. The big news with the H2D was the amount of AMS units that you could have as a maximum, which topped out at 24. Well, guess what? 
even with the single nozzle, it will still do 24. So that would be four MS Pros along with eight AMS HT units. So go crazy. On the back of the printer, the second input hole is blocked off. But I guess maybe you could upgrade this to a dual nozzle. But as it turns out, that's a no. Bamboo are not offering this as a solution. So select your printer carefully. On the laser side, this one only supports the 10 watt over the D's 10 stroke 40 watt, but matches the air filtration of G3, H12, coconut shell carbon filtration, VOC and matriculate matter filtration. This one here is the combo and came with the 10 watt laser and the plotter, which I will attempt again in a future video. So make sure you like and subscribe. That's of course, if you want to see that. But if you were the type of person that was looking for a larger X1 carbon that many people have been going on about for the last couple of years, I believe this is it. It's the single tool head that gets the job done. I think as a single tool head, it feels like a long overdue upgrade. The printer performs well out of the box from leveling to your first purge, followed by some witty remarks on the screen that almost feels like a long lost friend. Oh, friend. In any case, out of the box, it is performing well. And since we are in this new studio, I decided to print the duality LED track system over on printables. This design really caught my eye from a project perspective. As with a few electronics, you can have fully addressable LED setups encased inside of the 3D printed track system. Just add an ESP32 and a few strings of LEDs, slice, print, screw, and well, a little bit of programming and there you are. So the links for the duality track system are down below in the description and it's a process where you don't have to push your fingers into your eyes. I went on to print a couple of models over on Maker World, including the Cyberbrick kits, which Bamboo did send me parts for some time ago. And with Polymaker Filament, I made this awesome forklift. Next, I moved on to this shark suit model by Minimal Illusions. Red London phone box, well, I've got you covered. So what about the shortcomings with the small surge of tool changes just about to come out onto the market? I'm kind of surprised that Bamboo didn't go down that route. To me, it seemed like a logical step. And I had assumed that the H2 range was a temporary side quest while they were busy creating something genuinely disruptive and a real game changer. My ongoing gripe with this machine, as with the P1 and the X1 ranges, is the filament wastage compared to a true tool changer setup. And not just how it ejects the purge material, but where. Yes, having it poop out the back was quirky the first 100,000 times. But if we're being serious about advancing the platform, efficiency and filament conservation needs to be front and center. The H2D improves the color change process thanks to its dual nozzle arrangement. But fundamentally, the waste issue still remains. Of course, the importance of this depends entirely on your use case. Plenty of users aren't bothered about multicolor printing, but I'd argue that almost everyone cares about burning through material unnecessarily. A one size fits all printer is a nice idea, but just not a particularly realistic one. That said, both the HTD and the H2S absolutely excel in their Corex wide speed print precision, onboard AI and remote monitoring capabilities are unquestionably strong in those core technical areas. Remote control printing still blows my mind and allows me to still be printing models even when I'm on the go. Although that's if the build plate and material are loaded or if someone is around to clear the bed down. Now, two of the most common questions that I get are what 3D printer should I buy? And why on earth do they design it like that? The first, of course, is a total minefield because the right printer very much depends entirely on your specific use case. What you're printing today, what you might be wanting to attempt in six months from now, the material that you care about and can realistically handle, plus whether or not you're chasing the multicolor or multi-material workflows. The H2S ticks a lot of those boxes, largely thanks to its generous build volume, but it also begs the practical question, can you actually accommodate it or will you end up wishing that you'd gone for the H2D instead? The second question is more of a grumble. I don't know why they've done that. We've heard that before, going all the way back to the X1 Carbon, where its bold declaration of no more bed slingers, well, was only for Bamboo to then unleash the A1 and the A1 Mini, proudly declaring them the GOAT. Yes, they're leagues ahead of the early Creality kits, but let's not kid ourselves. This is just smart ecosystem engineering. Hook you in early, draw you into the bamboo orbit and keep you there. Much like Apple, Android and every other tech giant locking in your loyalty while expanding their market share. And this isn't the first time I've mentioned it. Here's the A1 video where I was talking about pizza slices as an analogy around their market share and their market share tactics. And of course, they seem to be dominating that space. So the H2S from a review point of view, well, yeah, it's great. And for a lot of users, it will streamline your workflow so much you'll finally have time to do other things around the house. 
but with the H2D casting a rather expensive shadow, will you be paying the extra or look elsewhere entirely? So the postman has just been and they have given a couple of things just arrived. We have a Bamboo Lab Vision Encoder and we also have a spare nozzle. So it begs the question, what is a vision encoder and what's it used for? Well, the H2S does have three onboard cameras. One of them can be used to map the bed. And the most precise 3D printer, as we all know, can't escape mechanical inaccuracies. But the Bamboo Lab Vision Encoder ensures that it never compromises your prints. Featuring a matrix 10 4 encode markers and 5 micron resolution optical measurements, this advanced XY calibration system delivers motion accuracy to 50 microns, which is impressively thinner than a human hair. More than just compromising for inherent mechanical variances, the vision encoder is built to adapt over time, actively correcting issues like belt loosening and mechanical wear to maintain accuracy throughout your entire H2S journey. So I'm probably not going to notice much, but I've also just done that to the H2D as well. And and um, yeah, they were certainly out. So while we're talking about the camera, the integrated live view camera adds intelligent visual oversight, actively detecting spaghetti failure, foreign object intrusion, and purge shoot buildup before they become critical. Inside the H2S maintains a 65 degree Celsius active heated chamber and reaches up to 1000 millimeters per second on the tool head speed. It also delivers a blistering 20,000 millimeters squared acceleration. Pair it with the Bamboo Lab high flow nozzle, well, and you can reduce the print time by up to 15%. As for compatibility, the H2S H2S nozzle has been completely redesigned. Components such as the extruder motor, drive gear, hot end assembly, and cooling fan have been upgraded. Therefore, aside from the cutting blade, the H2S tool head components are not interchangeable with those of the A1 series. So two more noteworthy points and I'll let you go. Dropping into the slicer with its Bamboo Labs also hole and contour compensation feature. It further reduces tolerance errors by minimizing the need for manual trial and error. The result, well true fitting critical printing, allowing you to drop shafts, bearings and fasteners without repeated adjustments or rework. So what if you're worried about compromised elements on choosing the S over the D? Well, the S is fitted with 23 sensors and three onboard cameras. The H2S keeps a watchful eye over every phase of your print process, flow rate, chamber and extrusion temperature, tool availability, filament tracking and real-time compensation and continuous monitoring to ensure peak reliability. So let me know what you think about this machine down in the comments below. Would you prefer the H2S or would you prefer the H2D? I'm genuinely very... <laughs> I'm genuinely very intrigued to find if the real world user actually asked for this printer or if it's just some stats that somebody else has just made out. You can keep the conversation going, of course, down in my Discord server. Again, links will be down in the description, along with affiliate links to buy this printer or that printer, should you wish to. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work. I don't know why I'm doing this, but I figured I'd... Sound check. Do-do-do-do-do.